In this video, I'm going to go to a Korean traditional market to try some of their food, and it might be my new favorite market. They have all kinds of delicious food, and unlike other markets in Korea, every vendor sells completely different items from one another. So don't skip a second of this video and join my amazing journey. Hey guys, it's me, your favorite person, Jimmy. Today I'm here in Seoul Central Market in Shindang, joined by a very special guest. This is Diane, food expert. Believe it or not, she's an actual food expert. Once upon a time, she was a star on MasterChef Korea, and she currently works as a photographer in the food industry. So yeah, it would be quite accurate to call her a food expert. So, my good friend Diane wants to start with this dried fish place. That doesn't sound that great, but... It's so good. She insists that it's amazing and there's always people waiting. I like how they're inclusive too. Rainbow hands. <laughs> Korea's come a long way. <laughs> they have tables inside the restaurant, but my friends told me that I'm a street smart guy, so I decided to sit outside on the street where I can be smart. So apparently they're gabojingo, which is a uh, squid, right? Mm. Their squid is the most popular, and she insists that it's the best thing you can get. Yeah, it's so good. It's, it's kind of pricey, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> 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 nah, don't worry about it. The street's not gonna pay it for itself. Just because it's street food it doesn't mean it has to be for free. <laughs> I'm like so cruel. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. If you want to become a great content creator, you must have no shame. <laughs> Stop. Oh my God. Thankfully, this bean sprout soup, some seaweed, and the kimchi were free. And we also got a beer to split between us. So this is Terra Draft Beer. It's kind of like Bud Light equivalent. I think it's pretty good. I don't drink often, but drinking some beer outside like this feels pretty amazing. They kindly let us film them cooking in the kitchen, where they were cooking this half-dried squid. I typically don't really like squid, but they've done a really good job of making it clean and appetizing. Oh my god. This is like... They served it with this special dipping sauce. It has mayonnaise, chili pepper, soy sauce, and sesame seeds. Not gonna lie, I'm not really a squid person. They always look like overly dried and super skinny. That's big. Here. It's a dipping sauce. Except for some squid sushi that I had before, I think this might be the first squid that I genuinely enjoyed. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty unbelievable. I know. I was a little skeptical at first, but I approve her choice. Diane knows what she's talking about. I gotta say, it went extremely well with the beer as well. This would turn anybody into an alcoholic. Even a man who is forever traumatized by an alcoholic father like me. I'm sorry, father. At least let me have that story with me. I really wonder where they found these squids. They must have been like bodybuilders back in the water. They had a lot of meat on them. It's only our first restaurant of the day, but it seems that Diane really knows what she's talking about when it comes to food. Well, this is going to be a fantastic day for my belly. In front of the squid restaurant, we found this Korean-style donut stall. It was kind of early for a dessert, but we just couldn't pass by. They were only 75 cents each. Jimmy, Jimmy? Yeah, Jimmy Kim. Uh, Jimmy Kim? Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 Look at all their sugar. It's probably unhealthy, but that's okay. You can eat healthy all the time. That's unhealthy for you. <laughs> so mine had this red bean paste that was super sweet and super hot. And Diane got the one called Kwabeki, which was a more simple donut. It's so light and fluffy. I want to try it? I want to try it. Oh god. Give me like indirect kiss. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> you grow up! <laughs> I really like the one that Diane got too. It was probably one of the best Kwabeki that I've had before. I love this. And I'm pregnant now. <laughs> I have to say, this is really good. Mm, it's really good. Now I want to try all the things here. Yeah, we should. Yeah. Because I feel like, as a food expert like us, 
<laughs> I'm an expert too now. <laughs> <laughs> we should really experience all these things, you know? So why don't I expand my experience? That's right, I'm gonna have some hot dog, which is kinda like Korean pancake. It's filled with sugar, which makes it super sweet. And she just cooks it on a pan like this. Typically, they deep fry the hot dog in a large pan, but maybe she knows that I'm trying to lose some body fat. I'm trying to stand in a polite stance. <laughs> Oh my god, it's so hot. It's so hot. It is super hot. Should we wait? You're gonna just eat it. I like the pink. <laughs> <laughs> it's very much like what I had as a child. Compared to other hot dog places that I've been to, I felt like this was more minimal, and it was very similar to what I had as a child. There were parts in the market that were so raw, it kind of reminded me of Korean movies. This is the kind of alleyway where I had to fight through like a wave of Korean gangs to save my girl. <laughs> <laughs> so we're standing in front of this place where they have Vietnamese pho. 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 I heard really great things about this place, so we're gonna try that. Why does a Korean traditional market have a Vietnamese restaurant? Because us Koreans, we're so respectful that we even respect other cultures too. In fact, I am so respectful. I even dressed up like a Vietnamese F boy today. You can call me Jimmy Nguyen. <laughs> <laughs> we decided to get the beef rib pho and this thing called Kom Son. Wow, Vietnamese language is tough. Wow, this is looking beautiful. I can't tell how authentic it is, but the food looks pretty unbelievable. Hopefully, there is no right or wrong way to eat this. Because if there is, I'm probably gonna do it wrong. Food expert opinion. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> but do you think it's good pho for Korea? Oh, I think so. I, I think, think so. For, for Korea, this pho is probably one of the better spots I've tried. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Mm. Savage. Gotta point one thing out though, and this is uh, this is a complaint that I have about 99% of the Korean restaurants. When they give you meat, it's like 90% bones and 10% meat. I mean, they have to pay their bills and meat is expensive in Korea, I understand. But it's like, at least one restaurant should step up and go, Listen, when I say I give you meat, I give you meat. I am yet to see one restaurant like that. <laughs> Okay, let's try the rice dish this time. And I guess I shouldn't be surprised that it's really good. Rice, egg, meat, that's like a perfect polygamous relationship. It's good. Yeah, I know. I'm quite liking the street life. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I'm starting to get a little thirsty. How about we get something cool to drink? I'm gonna get this misukaru slushy. Misukaru is this powder mixture of a bunch of different grains, and we like to mix that in water or milk to drink it. When I was like 10, if I go to like my friend's place, their moms would like offer us some ice cold misukaru after a long day at a playground. Nothing quite like that. <laughs> so it was kind of like Slurpee that they have in 7 Eleven, but it's more gooey and you can actually taste the grains. Fantastic. Wow, very sweet. Is it? Oh, it's sweet? Yeah, they must have added a lot of sugar. <laughs> Can I try? I remember one day, just another tough day at a playground. I must have been nine. I went to one of my friend's place and his mom offered me misukaru like a lot of other Korean moms do. And my god, I don't know where the misukaru came from, but that one tasted nasty and it was kind of green too. Wow, someone gives you food and you're just shitting on it. And I was like, oh, I'm not staying here for dinner. No. <laughs> <laughs> they had a Mexican restaurant that's supposed to be really popular, so I decided to try that. Seeing Mexican food in a Korean traditional market, I didn't expect it, but it made me really happy. It didn't seem like they're authentic per se, but let's not judge too soon. 
We got a bottle of Tecate, which was kind of expensive for what it is. But as long as we can enjoy, right? You want some? Sure. Indirect kiss, but I'm only pregnant anyway. Not gonna make a difference. <laughs> okay, I'm pushing it too far. <laughs> Guys, I apologize for being inappropriate. Okay, that's our... Chips and guac. Oh, chips and guac. Okay. Now I can immediately tell that there's something really Korean about this and that's the portion. It just seems a little different from what I'm used to. These chips, they're pretty tiny. Oh, but they're like blazing hot. So I like that. I would say it was just okay as a snack. But the guacamole definitely needed some lime juice and tomatoes. Oh, you got some on your... You look like Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> and these are the Korean tacos that I couldn't wait to try. I've said this before, but I used to live in California, so I'm very specific about my Mexican food. Aside from the black tortilla, it didn't seem too far from what I know as taco. Well, does it taste like a real taco? There's a layer of cheese underneath. So that's really awesome. Personally, I like some lime juice on mine. I gotta say, while I thought it was very tasty as a food, it wasn't as aromatic as the tacos that I had in California. Like, the ingredients tasted more bland. It felt a little Korean, but I approve. So that's supposed to be quesadilla here. It's kind of tiny. I, they say size doesn't matter, but it kind of does. Why is that so funny to you? That's weird. Dude, what do you mean? <laughs> Where was I? Oh, yeah, so size matters. And uh, it is a little small. I feel like it's just right for you, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to start somewhere, you know? <laughs> so looking at what it is, it was the same tortilla as the tacos, but it just had grilled mozzarella cheese that got crispy around the edge. I paid an extra dollar for the guacamole. It's always the right decision. Let's see if this can satisfy me like my good amigos in San Diego. And honestly, it's not bad if you're looking for something simple, but I think it really needs some carne asada in it. Oftentimes in Korea, they radically localize international foods so that most of their customers can appreciate. So I don't blame them for straying off a little too far from the Mexican borders. In fact, I think it's cool that they have a Mexican restaurant in the Korean traditional market. I'm gonna pretend like I dropped his camera. Let's see his reaction. Jimmy, I'm so sorry I dropped it. No, you didn't. I did. I'm so sorry. No, you didn't. I really what did. I'm you? so sorry. What happened? It's really messed up. No, you. No, you <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh. Oh. <laughs> You've been recording this too. I recorded it because I wanted to see your reaction. Totally you are fine. actually really like nice. <laughs> yeah, if it already happened, then there's nothing that I can do to change that, you know? Okay. I was actually gonna trick her into eating dog meat as a revenge, but I guess not today. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Korean traditional food. <laughs> I'm kidding, we don't eat those anymore. Wait, apparently they still do. That lady's casually taking a nap. Uh, five orders of... Chihuahua meat. <laughs> Just to clarify with you guys, it's very rare to find dog meat in Korea. Like, I've never had them. And this dog was a pet, not a product. Anyway, you should put your skills to good use. YouTube needs your salvation. There's so many garbage contents. Hey guys, hey guys. I'm gonna totally prank my girlfriend. I'm gonna act like I'm cheating on her. <laughs> we'll see her reactions. By the way, she knows I'm doing this, everything staged. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we need something traditional to end the day with. So how about this kalguksu, some hand-cut noodle place. We got their most popular kalguksu with fish eggs, and this suyuk, which is boiled pork belly. What is that? That looks like an alien brain. Do you know what this is? Yeah, it's um sperm sack. Oh, it's a milk thing. Yeah. But the nature of what it is is kind of bizarre, don't you think? 
I love it. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> oh, You're I was such like, a dirty man. No, I was like, You're dirty, dirty mind. I, I didn't, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> Your face. I, I like it too. You I, like I, it? I love it too. <laughs> okay. I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of disturbing because I knew what it was, but it honestly tasted really rich and flavorful. That's eggs, right? Yeah, this is egg. So both sperm and egg. <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> Since I'm eating both eggs and sperms, tomorrow morning I'm gonna poop out baby fish. Oh, and look at the noodles. The noodles look so good. Look, they're like so thick and like hand cut. Yeah. It looks so legit, right? I gotta say though, the fish egg and the fish milk, so they're, they're very like high quality, mm. not fishy at all. Those things can be pretty nasty, you know what I mean? Yeah. They can be like really fishy and disgusting. Yeah. It's how I feel about uni sometimes. Yeah. It's like so it bad. It can be pretty bad. This is how you become a YouTuber. Hold it up like this in front of the camera and make a surprise face. <laughs> The noodles tasted amazing. Every ingredient in it was fresh. It was solid, solid Korean noodles that I would recommend to anyone. So let's try this suyu, pork belly. I like to dip it in this samjang, a textbook Korean dipping sauce. And the meat is super tender, jello-y. It's a relatively simple dish. It's just pork that's been boiled with other things. But I just love that simplicity. You know what I also like to do? Take some of that kimchi, get the pork belly with it. All right, since we're Koreans, we have to always end the meal with the coffee. Turns out there's a lot of cool cafes around here. And of course, Diane knows where they are. We ended up going to this coffee shop that was in a very quiet alleyway. Well, if some bad things were to happen, I'm sure Diane can protect me. It's kind of like a video game. Oh, yeah. You look like a like a video game character right now. I'm like a video game character too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Korea has a lot of aesthetic coffee shops like this. A lot of them are pretty worth visiting. That's called Shike, and this right here is called Omija Tea, Omija Cha. Shike is one of my favorite beverages that are only in Korea. It has grains of rice in it, which also tastes really great. Please try it one day, guys. And guys, after a long day of experiencing a bunch of different food, here's my conclusion. So is a Seoul Central Market worth visiting? Oh, absolutely, my friend. There's a great variety of food, and all of them tasted fantastic. I want to come back. But Jimmy, it looks like you spent a lot of money. Is there a way to help you without spending money? Oh, you know it. You guys can listen to my songs on Spotify for absolutely free. All thanks to you guys, it's been growing a lot recently and I'll reinvest every penny I make from it on making more videos. Till we meet again, goodbye guys.